Hey everyone, me Kevin here. I've just had my hands on the new stimulus bill for about 30 minutes and I want to break down my preliminary findings in the new Republican stimulus bill. This is the skinny bill. This is the one we expect to get about 51 votes in the Senate along party lines. All Republicans, no Democrats, no independents. However, Republicans are trying to pass this bill this week to pressure Democrats into negotiating with them. Remember, as soon as they lose one Republican senator's vote in the Senate, they need a Democrat to replace that person. That is, the Senate can literally pass nothing unless they have all of the senators that are Republicans passing it, or they get a mixture of Democrats and Republicans. So Democrats have a lot of power, and I do not expect this version of the bill to actually be what ends up getting passed by both chambers of Congress, because, well, first of all, it sucks, and second of all, there's no way Democrats are going to be okay with this. But here is what it is now. So think of this as like the baseline and we're gonna build onto this. I actually like calling this the skeleton bill. Oh, and remember I've got a Labor Day coupon for the courses down below and get life insurance in as little as five minutes. Okay, that's out of the way, let's get into this. These things are not in it. Nothing about stimulus checks, nothing about Donald Trump getting authorized to use his $300 billion for stimulus checks. Nothing about that is in here. Nothing about an FBI building or nothing about a Federal Bureau of Investigations, anything. Nothing about EIDL grants or EIDL money. Nothing mentioning heroes, nothing mentioning hazard. Nothing mentioning deferment or forbearance, which the HEROES Act was modifying a lot of verbiage regarding forbearance and deferment to try to clarify this and make this a little bit easier for consumers and make uh, the rules a little bit more clear for banks. Nothing for rental assistance, which we've got $21 billion of back rent that's owed in this country. This is going to potentially lead to an eviction crisis. Nothing about an eviction uh, moratorium or more formal eviction protection in this bill. Nothing for SNAP, which is the food stamps assistance program. Uh, nothing for food in, in general, other than references to the FDA. Uh, nothing for state and local governments. Unemployment. No $400 as rumored, instead $300 per week through the end of the year. This would obviously uh, pick up where the FEMA unemployment program leaves off. PPP round two was expected to only apply if your revenues declined between 25 and 50%. It is actually going to be 35% based on this. So if your revenue in the first or second quarter of 2020 is 35% lower than it was, in 2019 for the first and second quarter, then you would qualify as long as you have less than 300 employees, riot damage is included, uh, and there are some other things included as well like PPE and some more flexibility now. There is a tax credit for contributions to scholarship granting organizations. I think that's a really fancy way, and I'm still working through this, but I think that's a very fancy way of saying school choice which we're hearing this a lot by Republicans. Republicans want school choice, which means uh, parents can select where to send their children to school and then get a tax credit for doing it. Basically what that does is it takes money away from the state, which pays for schools. You know, states pay 90% of school budgets. It takes money away from the state, lets the parent keep more tax money from the state and then spend that at the schools that they want to. It's just a backhanded way of, of basically having school choice. That is in here, Democrats, not gonna be okay with that. There is also a, and I'll get more details on this. Right now it's listed as a 100% credit of not more than 10% of your gross income. So if you make 100 grand, you could get, uh, and, and it says gross income, so it'll be interesting to see how that applies in terms of deductions and that. But anyway, 10% of gross income, and uh, that's 100% credit. So if you made 100 grand gross, you would, uh, presumably adjusted gross income is what they're referring to. Uh, you would get a $10,000 credit. Furthermore, there is a clawback on the Fed here, on the Federal Reserve. They are reducing the $500 billion authorized in emergency liquidity for businesses, states, and municipalities, excuse me, uh, to $250 billion. So they're slashing the Fed's budget in half for providing liquidity to businesses, states, and municipalities. I will say though, both of these lending programs were highly underused. So I don't think that that really does anything other than try to uh, lower the overall cost of this bill. I think that's what they're trying to achieve here. And then they're redirecting 146 billion in unspent CARES Act money, probably the leftover PPP money to this new version, the second round of the PPP. 
Liability protections are in here. They're, this probably deserves an entirely separate video uh, because liability protections are, are pretty niche, but they're in here for schools and healthcare providers. Uh, they're very stringent. We go back to December, these liability protections, December of 2019, and there are restrictions uh, that, eh, well, we'll talk about it in a separate video. Again, it gets so complicated, the liability protections regarding gross negligence and willful misconduct, and it, it gets very legal easy. All right, fisheries are getting $500 million in disaster assistance. The USDA and agricultural programs, $20 billion. Schools, $105 billion through September 30th of next year. 5% to the states, 67% to, uh, 67%, excuse me, goes to elementary and secondary school grants, 28% to higher education. However, two-thirds of the money is conditioned on reopening. The uh, Public Health Social Services Emergency Fund is getting $31 billion. 20 billion of that to biomed research, 2 billion for stockpiles, medical stockpiles and supplies, 6 billion for tracking, tracing, and monitoring. We've got uh, this one I'm working on as well, so stay tuned for more on this. You could probably Google this one uh, within the next few hours here. Grants to states for childcare, so this will be interesting too. 5 billion for back to work childcare credits or grants, and then another 10 billion for those specifically. So you've got 5 billion for state childcare and 10 billion here for back to work childcare grants. I'm not exactly sure what the details of this are yet though, so stay tuned on that. Uh, and again, in a couple hours, you could probably Google it as well and get a little bit of an update here, or of course, subscribe to the channel and I'll bring you some more updates as well. They're also reallocating $10 billion from the CARES Act to the post office. As soon as their cash on hand falls below $8 billion, that money does not need to be repaid. And then there's also uh, stuff in here about rare earth mining and boosts available for a rare earth mining. Uh, this usually has to do with like lithium for batteries. Uh, and uh, although I, I don't know if you really call that being mined because of the way they, they extract that from the earth. Uh, but, uh, you know, other rare earth minerals could be things that are used in uh, semiconductor manufacturing and that. So it's interesting that that's in here so far. That's the only kind of like, oh, what does that have to do with the CARES Act? But uh, yeah, this is a very skinny bill. It's like I've mentioned, it's a skeleton proposal and I call it a skeleton rather than skinny because I think this is just trying to lay the foundation. And then when they negotiate with Democrats, we'll see, okay, well, let's bump up the unemployment boost from 300 to 500. Let's include stimulus checks. Let's include rental protections. And maybe we'll end up with something that, you know, instead of this being somewhere between 500 billion and maybe 700 billion uh, ends up being somewhere around 1.3 to 1.5 trillion dollars once it's said and done and negotiated. So stay tuned. This is what we have so far. I uh, promise to also deliver on the updates for liability protections, the uh, grants for childcare, the school of choice. That's what I'm going to be working on next to get more information on these items. So that's what we have so far. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to subscribe. Check out those coupon codes down below. I will link this bill in the description down below as well. And folks, thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.